I asked ChatGPT for 20 unknown hidden tips. It came up with some really insane ones that are going to change everything. And it also came up with some absolute garbage that we need to mock. Place an autograbber in a barn or coop to automatically collect milk and wool from cows and goats and eggs from chickens and ducks. You know what, this is a good tip. We all already knew this but don't worry, it gets ridiculous. These tips are about to get absolutely outrageous. During the egg festival in spring, you can buy strawberry seeds. Plant them but don't sell all your harvest. Keep a few to turn into seeds using a seed maker, allowing you to have a continuous strawberry farm. Yeah, you could keep some of your strawberries, turn them into seeds and maybe grow them in your greenhouse or wait for the next year, but I do not think this is as great as this bot thinks. The quality of honey depends on the flower your bees have access to. Different flowers yield different types of honey. This is a fact, not a tip. Let me fix it quickly. Grow blue jazz in spring, summer spangle in summer and fairy roses in fall to maximize your profits. Or just don't do that and keep all of your bee houses on ginger island and always make fairy rose honey, the most profitable honey. Don't forget that ginger island has no season so anything goes there. The community center is not the only place to spend your resources. You can also buy bundles at the Jojo Mart for a different set of rewards. No, you cannot spend resources at the Jojo Mart. You can only buy community upgrades with money. And there are no rewards, just the same progression that you would get by completing the community center. ChatGBT wants you to go the Jojo route. This is despicable. Do not allow this bot to negatively influence you into supporting the corporate enemy. Use a rain totem to make it rain on the next day, even in a season where it typically doesn't rain. This can help with crop growth and save time on watering. Well, it can rain in any season, it's really random and for some reason completely depends on the amount of steps you have taken. It is true that there are two guaranteed rainy days in summer but besides for that the seasons are equal in terms of rain. You can't marry Krobus normally, but with the 1.5 update, you can use a prismatic shard to change your children into a void spirit, which Krobus is, and then marry him. I promise, this is exactly what the bot said. This is just gibberish. You cannot marry Krobus, but you can invite him to be your roommate with a void pendant that you can buy for 200 void essence. If marrying Krobus required you to sacrifice your children and turn them into void spirits, then this game would be quite interesting. You can get the rusty key to unlock the sewer by donating 60 items to the museum. This is where Krobus lives and where you can buy rare items. Yeah, this is true. After donating enough items, you will get access to the sewer where you can change your profession, catch a legendary fish, buy an iridium sprinkler every Friday, get another star drop and most importantly buy the return scepter. So yeah, don't neglect the museum. The last tip was fine so I had some hope until I saw this. The mushroom trees in your farm cave will produce mushrooms daily. To maximize this don't place anything near them or obstruct their growth. Hmm, the mushroom cave will produce mushrooms daily and you cannot obstruct them in any way. They also aren't trees. This is a mushroom tree and it can only produce mushrooms with a tapper and you also cannot really obstruct this either. There are three statues in the secret woods, one of which replenishes your energy. The other two require sweet gem berries and honey to receive gifts. Close, but not quite. Bring a sweet gem berry to get a star drop that will permanently increase your energy. And bring some honey to get a useless buff that literally does nothing. Now if we could replenish our energy here, that'd be nice, but no, that's just not the case. On the 13th of spring, if you enter the wizard's tower and check the bookshelf, you can get the easter egg hat, which you can wear. Ah yes, the easter egg hat that you can find in a bookshelf, who else forgot about this one anyway? To get the straw hat, just win the egg hunt on the 13th of spring. Not as easy as just rummaging through a bookcase, but easy nonetheless. Speaking of straw hats, let me know if you enjoyed the One Piece live action on Netflix, I found it quite interesting. On festival days, you can enter the locations where the festival is taking place to interact with NPCs or fish in new spots. I think almost no one knew this. This is great. 
While maple syrup and pine tar are used in various crafting recipes, oak resin is needed for more valuable items. So prioritize placing tappers on oak trees. You know what? This is very true and I have said it before, you need oak resin to craft kegs. Honey is great but nothing quite compares to the value of wine. Find secret notes while digging, fishing and performing other tasks. These notes offer clues and hints about the game's mysteries. Boring. Naturally you will find secret notes as you play the game, however remember to instantly read them to clear up inventory space. You can always reread them in the menu options. After reaching level 10 in the mines, Marlin will send you energizing elixir in the mail. You can drink it to regain energy. Ah, uh, I think the bot is very confused here, not sure where this came from. You will get a star drop after reaching floor 100 in the mines that will increase your maximum energy. Energizing elixir does sound pretty cool though. The desert trader in the Calico Desert allows you to trade items like solar and void essence for valuable goods, including exclusive furniture and statues. Yeah, this is true. Abuse the desert trader, they have amazing things on offer and will seriously make your game so much easier. Some items sold at the traveling cart are not available anywhere else, so check it regularly for unique items. This is true for the rare seed. Rare seeds grow into sweet gem berries, and the only way to get these is by buying them at the traveling merchant. Fortunately, they are guaranteed to be sold every Friday and Sunday during spring and summer. In fall and winter, these will be less likely to show. Turn a shed into a brewery by placing kegs inside. This allows you to age various beverages and produce valuable wine and beer. Yeah, rather place kegs in buildings to save space on your farm. The shed is a good option, however your farmhouse and barns are better as they are bigger and have more utility than the shed. Additionally, you can only age wine in the basement of your farmhouse. Interact with the witch's shrine in the witch's swamp to remove the witch's curse on your farm. If you select the option that allows monsters to spawn on your farm, you can remove the curse by bringing a strange bun to the shrine of night terrors. You can also bring a strange bun here to cause monsters to spawn on your farm if you are into that. Use the seed maker to convert crops into seeds. This can be more profitable than selling the crops directly. This is a weird one. Selling seeds is just a horrible idea. However, creating more seeds for hard to get crops can be worth it. Like for ancient fruits. So yeah, I can see this one making some sense. Utilize your seed makers on the correct crops. To enable widescreen mode, go to the option menu, hold down a left mouse button on the left cursor icon and drag it to the left corner. Then do the same with the right cursor icon. This is a little known way to expand your view. This does not even make any sense. This bot is just kinda stupid. Do not believe everything you find on the internet. If you want some actual real amazing tips that I wrote personally, watch this video next. Thanks for watching, but for now, I will see you in the next video.